Let's now join Juliana Olaika for the latest headlines coming from the UK this morning. Good morning, Juliana. It's good to see you. Now, more lockdown easing announced by the Prime Minister. Of course, a group of up to six people from different households will be able to meet outside in England from Monday. How welcoming is this? Good morning, Bissy. I think it's safe to say that it's immensely welcomed after way over two months of a lockdown. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, has said that uh, England have successfully um, underscored all of the five tests to contain the virus. And yes, from Monday, we are able to have garden parties and barbecues and meet with larger crowds outside. At the moment, the government is saying this is uh, just six people, I believe six additional people to uh, the members of your household. But he was very careful and cautious about saying people shouldn't be so quick to meet people from different households all at once. We do know that uh, a lot of car showrooms and other non-essential businesses will be open from June the 1st, and that will be further extended on June the 15th when we'll start to see uh, retail stores open. There wasn't any word yet on hairdressers and bars and they're really desperate uh, to get their um, doors open again. We're expecting that to be sometime in July. But yes, this is good news. Although um, considering Britain has been described as being one of the most coronaphobia countries on earth, we're not expecting there to be a rush, but certainly some people will definitely be uh, putting burgers and um, sausages on their barbecue from Monday afternoon. I can imagine that, Juliana. But at the same time, the government will start tapering its follow scheme for, uh, from August by forcing employers taking part to pay 20% of workers' wages as well as covering their national insurance and pension contributions. So it looks like government is beginning to realise the spiralling cost of the stimulus packages, right? Absolutely. Well, then, and they're certainly seeing that it cannot go on indefinitely. Already, the Chancellor has extended the scheme. The scheme um, officially was to end at the end of May. It's been extended until the end of October. And until the end of July, it will remain the way it is, which is the government subsidising um, employees' wages of up to 80%. So at the moment, they're paying uh, the wages of over 8 million people across the country. We're expecting an announcement from the Chancellor today. And what we're expecting is that um, from the start of August, the government will be paying 60 percent and it will be mandatory for your employer to pay, if not the entire 40 percent, they'll have to pay 20 percent. Now, it's already cost the government 15 billion pounds. It's expected to cost them in total 80 billion pounds, which is why I believe they've been doing their rounds on the media this morning, just letting the public know that it cannot continue for much longer. But of course, there have been some concerns. Um, according to the CBI, the Confederation of British Industry, they've been speaking to some employers and one in four uh, say that they're just not able to fund um, their employers' wages, even if they are getting uh, their businesses up and running again. So there are major concerns that once the scheme does stop, then there could be thousands, if not millions of redundancies, as we've seen with some of the major airlines who are furloughing uh, their staff, but have still announced thousands of job cuts. Uh, let's talk about data showing uh, that uh, the British car industry produced just 197 cars last month in April. Uh, of course, that uh, is because of the coronavirus. What was the UK car industry production capacity like before the coronavirus pandemic? Well, I can tell you it was a lot higher than that, uh, Bissy. Typically, in a month, you'd expect 400,000 cars to be produced. So the fact that it was just 197 cars is completely shocking, but uh, totally expected. That's a decrease of 99.7%. So practically nothing um, was created. Apparently, its cost to the industry is about £1.2 billion worth of losses, which is really serious. But... On the other hand, a lot of these uh, uh, companies have been speaking out and they have repurposed a lot of their production um, plants. So a lot of car manufacturers have instead been making personal protective equipment. They've been making medical equipment and also some really um, advanced uh, breathing uh, capabilities for the NHS. And actually, they've been shipping uh, many of these um, systems across the world. So they have been kept 
rather busy, uh, but car plants have reopened again. So we're hoping that there will be a tick up in May. It won't be like it was before. In fact, I believe industry bosses reckon that only 1.2 million cars will be manufactured here in the UK. But it's a huge loss, but nothing that the industry wasn't expecting. Thank you, Juliana. I know you have a few more crossings before you call it or before you begin the weekend in full, but do enjoy your weekend, Juliana. We'll see you again next week. Thank <music> you.